welcome to the Twin Cities at U.S. Bank Stadium in downtown Minneapolis. Today, two NFC clubs going head-to-head -head, as it'll be the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Greg Joseph now ready to get this one started, and we are underway from Minneapolis. Austin Scott on the return from his end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Here's Hertz. Eluding the pressure right. And oh, right away, he lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And his guys are going to take over at the 21 yard line. To put it mildly, that is not the way anyone wants to start off a game. You fumble on your first offensive snap. But now what you're worried about is, does that linger throughout the game for your guys on offense? And how's the defense going to handle it? Because no one expects to run out on the field on the first play and have to all of a sudden start to play themselves. They started this drive backed up against the wall by the turnover. But I love their fight, planted their feet, and forced the incompletion on first down. To throw, Cousins. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Reed Blankenship. And the Eagles are going to take over at their own 11-yard line. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what, the second sentence of the yeah. coach's address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. Throwing his hurts. And this is caught. It's Brown. And they work this well upfield across the 45. The big play has them all the way out near midfield for a first and 10. First carry for DeAndre Swift. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. They get six. That'll leave him with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Hurt sets up to throw it. And he'll get this into the hands of Swift once again. And this will not be enough on third and five. He only gets three. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense, good tackle. The kick by Elliott is good. And the Eagles, they take a 3-0 lead. 
So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. Vikings now to start their next drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side because when you throw a pick, look, I know defensive backs, they have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away, but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. It's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. Complete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Throwing his cousins. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives, and it looks like they're going to have to give up the football again after this one. Looks like the offense is going to take another shot here. They're going on fourth and 13. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. A curious decision to go for it, but it pays off for the first down. First carry for the Boise State Bronco, Alexander Madison. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. Cousins throwing quickly out for Jefferson. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. On third down, Cousins. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he will have the Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Here's Madison running on first down. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Fletcher Cox there for the tackle. Here now second and nine from the 39-yard line. Another carry now for Madison. And he'll take this one down to the 36. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. Play action now, Cousins. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Oh, my goodness. Was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> oh, look at the former yeah. defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. Fourth down, Cousins. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. 
The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And this 11-play drive is going to lead to nothing on the scoreboard. They'll start on the ground. It's Rashad Penny. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. They'll try the right side here with Penny. Wiggles free. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Second quarter, two minutes remain. Three-nothing our score. First down carry, stiff-armed him. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Now this is going to be a quarterback draw. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. What a run there by Jalen Hurts. And the Eagles are able to add on to that lead. Hurts going to keep it on the draw. Well, partner, since this new two-point rule came into play, offenses spend a lot more time working on it. That means the defenses are doing the exact same thing. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. But Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive, and they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Now a second and ten. Throwing Cousins. And that's complete to KJ Osborne. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Now Cousins. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Here's second and ten. Now Cousins. That is caught by Josh Oliver, the former San Jose State Spartan. Touchdown, Vikings! Josh Oliver, 54 yards. And the Vikings get a late score here, the final minute of the first half. 
The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room? This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football. Full half to be played. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Scott on the return out of the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Great, great, great. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there. That could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Second and eight coming from the 19. Off the play fake. Here's Hurts. That's caught by the big tight end, Dallas Goddard. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. On first and ten, it's Hurts. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. Play action with Hertz. He's going deep for Brown. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. Second and ten. Here's Hurts to throw. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield strife. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. So after that sack, Hurts and the Eagles. Tough spot here. Third and long. From the midfield strife, they'll look to throw. Forced out to his left. He's going deep for Brown. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not win it in. And that is not what you expect from a receiver of his caliber. Sometimes you get a little ahead of yourself. You don't look it in, and all of a sudden it's on the ground. A surprise to all. And likely time for one final play here in the half, so they will go for it on fourth down. In motion right is Brown. They'll throw now on the final play. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. That's it for the first half. Two more quarters to go. We'll have plenty more to see after the break. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. The Vikings set to receive the second half kickoff, and they trail it here as we resume play. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Yeah. 
Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Cousins on third and two. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he will have a Vikings first down as they get five there on third and two. Running from the shotgun with Madison. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Possibly a good spot here to take a shot as they come out with three receivers to the left on second and less than a yard. Going to run with Madison again. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Cousins. And he's got this to Jefferson. Touchdown, Vikings! Justin Jefferson, 41 yards! And the Vikings have taken the lead here in this third quarter. Great corner route there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field, and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Joseph connects on the extra point, and the lead is up to five. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And they'll be working from behind now following the touchdown a moment ago on the opening drive of the half. I think the guys right now, as they go out on offense, they're zeroing in on one big key. They don't have to do anything differently just because they're down on the scoreboard now. The intent is still the same in what they plan to do on offense. Throwing on second and long. Hurts being chased out left. And this turns into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. All right, partner, Deuce is wild on this sequence. Two plays, two sacks, and now two points thanks to the safety. Offensively, there just didn't seem to be much of a plan when they came out on attack. That led the defense create a little chaos up front and set up one of their guys to make a play and get through and record the sack. And excellent. here as this drive will start on the other side of the 50-yard line. Now that's the kind of return that warms the heart of a special teams coach. He'll be pushing us next time, Brandon, to make sure his guys are introduced in the starting lineups. These guys have such an influence on every game. The unsung heroes, remember, they have their own meetings, their own practice time, heck, their own spot on the bench in order to be ready to play each and every week. Here's a give to Madison running right. And a pretty good burst right there. He's going to take this down to the 33. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. And now Wiss 
whistles and a flag. And I think we got to jump here. Got a little antsy there.